Welcome, everybody, to another NHL offseason discussion. And today we're going to be talking about the Boston Bruins, my team, and an interesting offseason for the Bruins as they try to once again be a playoff team next season. And joining me is another very special guest to talk about the team. It is Sam Smith, Bruins YouTuber. And uh, Sam, it's awesome to have you on here and get a chance to talk about the Bruins and where this team's at heading into the year, what they did this off season and get ready for a new year of hockey. Yeah, it's great. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I have my concerns and I can't wait to talk with you today about them. Yeah, I, I certainly do as well. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting year for Boston. They haven't made a whole lot of changes. Um, I guess the, the biggest moves as far as the Bruins were concerned was re-signing Patrice Bergeron, who they absolutely needed to bring back. Um, right. And also getting David Krejci to come back over on a one-year deal. Uh, he played last year over in Europe, wanted to play back at home. They get him to come back now and presumably be the second line center. So Bergeron and Krejci return Krejci after a one-year absence. Um, you know, do you think that that's going to be enough for this team to continue to be the playoff level winning team that we're used to them being? Absolutely not. I think the Bruins need to do, um, I they need to do a couple things. Um, well, the first thing I suggest they do is clear some cap space. They're currently, I have cap friendly open on my phone. They have two point, they're two point two four over the cap right now. Yeah. So they need to figure out how to get that back down. Are they going to put somebody on LTIR? Are they going to have to trade some pieces? Like what's their, what's the, what's the next step for the Bruins? That That's my question. Mm -hmm. And um, also another concern is, you know, Pasternak's contract next season is going to be up. It's the last year of his deal. He's going to want 10 million. He deserves that money. Yep. So how are you going to pay him all that money? Are you going to structure his contract differently year per year? Is AAV going to be different? Like what I'm kind of, a whole, whole bunch of unanswered questions right now that I have about the Bruins. Yeah, 100%. The only um the only like real big change that they made was trading for Pavel Zaka from the mm -hmm. New Jersey Devils. They sent Eric Halla to New Jersey and this trade I I'm not a huge fan of personally. Zaka I think has underperformed pretty much his entire career to this point. Halla had 44 points last season and was very good in the second half of the year. I yeah. guess the upside is that Zaka is quite a bit younger, so maybe has that more potential down the line and that more upside down the line, whereas Z or, uh, where Hall is kind of you got what you've got at this point. But this was this is an interesting deal that I think kind of could go well or maybe not go well. Yeah, I agree. I feel I said this on um, my podcast. I've said this on a stream that I did talking about this. I did, I went live for free agency as it was happening. And yeah. then the trade happened. And I remember saying it was the right move, but the wrong player that they traded to New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling that something like this was going to happen. And I remember saying they should have traded Nosek instead of Hala. I feel like Hala earned his way to be at least a second or third line center on this team. He actually, did really, really well last year because I watched every single Bruins game last year and Paula turned it around when he was given the shot to play with Hall and Pasternak, yep. kind of being the centerpiece there and allowing Hall and Pasternak to be the main producers of that line. And Paula is fast. He is 31. So he still has a lots to give in this league. And I feel like it was just the wrong move. Nosek, I kind of feel like was kind of underperforming. Mm -hmm. Um, and then again, I wasn't expecting much out of him. He was supposed to be a bottom six forward to start with, and he is. Yep. So I guess we'll have to see more of him next year. Um, but for Zaka's sake, I feel like Zaka kind of reminds me of Jake DeBrusque in the sense that like was drafted in a decent spot, kind of is underperforming mm -hmm. comparatively in his entire career, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He played in New Jersey haven't had a lot of opportunity to really be a top player in this league mm -hmm. within a market like that, where they haven't really had a whole lot of success. Yeah. Only one playoff appearance since 2012. Um, I feel like this could be a good opportunity for him to kind of break out into the star that I think he can be. He's 25. He's young, super fast, has a lot of upside. 
we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think there's a lot of hope that the fit in New Jersey just wasn't there with Zaka and that a change right. of scenery could really get him going and start to get him to produce the way that he's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, Because he, he, like DeBrus, coming out of that 2015 draft, had a lot of hype around him. He was a first-round pick, and yep. he was expected to be a star player and has not reached that level yet to, in, to this point. Um. You know, he's going to be an interesting guy to watch because I, I wonder if he fits in and maybe has a really strong season. And we're lo- looking back on this going, well, I guess it ended up being a good move. And he just right. needed to get out of New Jersey to reach that potential. Or it could go the other way. And he has like 25 points. And we're like, oh, my God, what what's going on here? Another, right? Yeah. Yeah. Another this could go Nick, one way you know, or the other. Another case of Nick Felino, where yeah, pay him a two year. But well, last off season, a two year, seven point six million dollar deal, three point eight per season, yeah, and gives us eleven points, yeah. And I know change of scenery, but like he produced decently in Toronto, and of course in Columbus and Ottawa, yeah. So Just I mean, he, they say he was good in the locker room, which which is fine. We we need that, but at the same time, if he's underperforming tremendously, then. I don't care if he's a locker room leader. I yeah. want him to produce on the team. And exactly. He's a line center. And I don't even think he should be a Bruin, to be honest. I feel like we should move on from him if we absolutely can. But I don't, I would say nobody would want to take on a $3.8 million contract. That's which, the thing is good yeah. luck getting rid of that contract at this point. Which is, which is why I think we should have bought him out in the buyout period. Cause mm-hmm. it was literally here, have your $4 million and go sign somewhere else. Cause it was yeah. going to be it was a waste of money to be honest. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that he's going to be a little better this year. Obviously, I think he's probably not going to play a huge role, but uh, I'm hoping that he can at least fit in on the fourth line and give maybe at least 15 to 20 points, something better than 11, which was pretty brutal last season. Um but uh, again, it's kind of it's a lot of the same group coming back yeah. for the Bruins and this whole Ever since Bergeron and Krejci re-signed, there's, uh, everyone's talking about this is kind of the one last run, the one last hurrah with this group. Mm-hmm. Basically, Bergeron and Krejci being the core pieces. Marshawn's still got a few years left. He's younger than those two. But this really does feel like it's probably it for Bergeron. He weren't even sure if he was going to come back this season. I would say this is definitely it for Krejci. He's yeah. he's going to be done. This is his one last hurrah. Like, it feels like for this team in a lot of ways, it's their one last hurrah. So do you think that is this even going to be a good one last hurrah or is this going to be like tight to does this team even make the playoffs? I feel like it's going to be more of the same as what we saw last year. Yeah. And a good regular season. I feel like when Marshawn and McAvoy come back from their injuries and projecting mid to late November, early December, yeah. when they do come back, um, I feel like they'll be good. Um, and they were, they were a really good regular season team. It was just a really stacked Eastern conference, a hundred, hundred plus points Every and team, really make yep. the wild card. And that's practically unheard of. That's just how crazy the league was last year. I mean, maybe 95 points, maybe a top wild card spot. Maybe. I, I don't know. I'm I want I want to be wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I want this team to do better than they did last year, but I don't see it. The way this current team is structured, I don't see it. Um especially with the reports coming out now that the Bruins are honestly like looking to trade Craig Smith, which I'm like, mm, no, I don't think that's the wrong person to trade. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting year for sure. We got to talk about the injuries because that's another oh, factor that's going to play a serious role. I mean, we're talking about this Bruins team and what they're pot, what they're capable of and how good they may or may not be. They're going to be without their probably their best forward, certainly their highest scoring forward in Brad Marchand to mm-hmm. start the season. He's probably going to be out into December. Charlie McAvoy, their Norris Trophy level number one defenseman is out as well into likely December. Uh, Matt Grizzlick also is probably going to miss the start of the season. He had offseason surgery. Uh, like <laughs> You've got major, major pieces that are going to be missing at least the first 20 games of the season, if not more. 
I mean, those aren't guys that you can just replace either. That's going to play. I'm worried about the first two months with this team and them digging themselves a hole that they can't get out of later in the year because of how bad they might be in the first couple of months without those key players. That's what I'm I'm worried about, too. I want to see. um, I want to see Hampus Lindholm step up, be the top defenseman. He's probably going to be playing with Carlo on the right side, which is going to be brutal to watch. Um, Forbert's going to have to step up big time too. Um, he played he pretty well towards the end last year. He, yeah, that that game three against Carolina had like nine blocks, yeah, something like that, which was insane. Yeah. They're going to um, need a lot out of him. My one concern um, is that. The Bruins right now, even with McAvoy, only have three right-handed defensemen on the main roster. Mm -hmm. And they have five lefties. And with one of them out, that only leaves you with two. I hate seeing two of the same same shot on the same line. On the same line, yeah. Right? Like, I hate seeing two lefties at the D pair or three righties on an offensive pair, offensive trio, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I don't like seeing that because I feel like it kind of eliminates the one timer. Yeah. Which is terrible. Um but if you look at Providence, you got to bring somebody up cuz I don't want to I don't want to see Riley and Zaboral on the same line. Like I don't want to see that. So I kind of want to see somebody from Providence come up, maybe give Victor Berglund an opportunity, mm-hmm. maybe give Connor Carrick who's an NHL defenseman who we've seen in the NHL before, maybe give him a shot, you know. Um if the Bruins decide to re-sign him, maybe bring back Tyler Lewington, who played for the Bruins a couple games last year, mm-hmm. looked solid, got into a fight, which is which was actually a, a surprise to the Bruins from last season, seeing them uh, fight and step up. But um, yeah, I'm kind of concerned about the defense and like the lack of depth they have on the right side. It's kind of concerning. Yeah, no, definitely. They, they, it feels like they've got to bring in a, somebody with a right shot. Um, even if it's like maybe even like a PTO or something for training camp, give somebody a chance. Um, right. Yeah. You know, a, a veteran guy, give them an opportunity to earn a spot. But with, with McAvoy out for, you know, at least probably a couple of months of the year, you've got to have enough guys to fill that right side. I think asking somebody to play the offside is very tough because there aren't yeah. many guys that are good at it. We saw we saw Mike Riley take a crack at it last year, but I thought he was definitely better on the left side than the right. Um, I, I don't think he's a guy that you want moving to the right for a significant amount of time. And just overall defensive depth in general, I think they've got a lot of they've got a lot of okay defensemen, but they don't have a lot of higher level legitimate top four guys outside of, you know, McAvoy. And and Grizzlick, I would say, is a middle pair type guy. Carlo, yeah. Carlo, to me, might be the key to the entire Bruins defense this season because I thought he was horrendous last year. The last season was Carlo's worst as a Bruin. Um, I couldn't stand him. He wasn't the lockdown defensive guy that we that he was, you know, supposed to be. Got yeah. that new long term contract. Um, and uh, Carlo needs to step up and be. Be a guy that can lock down a D pair, you know, be the lockdown guy on a D pair with McAvoy out. He's probably going to have to be the top guy for the first couple of months. Yeah. And he needs to just, you know, not try to do too much, not try to be something that he isn't. He's never going to be a big offensive producer. That's not his game. He just needs to settle in, be a shutdown D man and play well defensively. And, He's got to be better to me than he was last season, especially with him playing the role that he is, does on this team. Yeah, I, I agree. And I feel like I did see a glimpse of that last year. I did see a glimpse of what you're talking about because um, on the penalty kill yeah. with him, and Derek Forbert, yeah. locked down. That was awesome that the fact that they were together. And I want to see them together on like on 5v5, five, 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 on even strength. I want to see them on the second deep pair together because I feel like Forbert earned it. And Carlo and Forbert could just be that huge shutdown defensive yep. that the Bruins have been lacking for years. Mm-hmm. So if Carlo can get slide into that role nicely with Forbert, take what they have in the penalty kill and then apply it to even strength, the five v five, that's going to be kill. That's going to be killer for other teams' offenses. That's going to be huge for us. Um, yeah, but Carlo, you know, not a crazy amount of upside after the last season getting paid like 
four million dollars or what? I don't know what it was. Four point like, one, yeah. Four point one, yeah. Per season, right. yep. And it's a six-year deal. It's gonna yeah. be a six-year deal. I, I don't know. I, I it's no, gonna... he was really good the year before. And then last year, I think, was a pretty big step back. He's got to get back to twenty twenty-one, Brandon Carlo. Yeah, he was. I mean, it kind of sucked near the end because he got hurt and whatever. Yeah. But like the first few months, he was arguably the best defenseman in the Bruins in the first couple months. So he, I want him to get back to that for sure. Especially now he's going to have to have a, an elevated role as the top defenseman. Because yeah. they wouldn't put Clifton there. Clifton yeah, definitely he's brutal not. to watch. Yes. Brutal. I yeah, remember he, constantly he, trashing on him during the season because he was just so bad. Yeah, he's a he's a guy that really needs to uh, be a depth player and not somebody who's a regular in the lineup mm-hmm. for sure. I agree. But overall, uh, the Bruins uh, again they haven't made a lot of changes this offseason. It seems like it's the one last hurrah with this current group. Um, I think we both kind of see them as a borderline playoff team. I think the real tough thing is how good the Eastern Conference is. And how much better other teams in this division have gotten. Like, I think Detroit and Ottawa have both made massive step forwards this offseason to where they're going to be competing for a playoff spot this year. Yeah. And I mean, you've oh, you've already got Tampa, you've already got Toronto, who's always great in the regular season, despite the playoff issues. You've got Florida, who may have taken a step back, but I don't think have gone back to the point where they're not going to make the playoffs. So you've already got three tough opponents right there. Then you've got Boston. Now you've got Detroit taking a big step and Ottawa taking a big step forward. You've got Buffalo, who I don't think is playoff ready, but is starting to show some signs of life. Like This is a very difficult division. And I don't think a playoff spot is guaranteed to the Bruins. They're going to have to really work for that spot to get it. They have to mesh together well. They have to, I don't, they have to do something different. Yep. Maybe Jim Montgomery brings a new coaching, uh, coaching style than what Bruce Cassidy had or something. I don't know. But um, I don't feel like Ottawa is quite ready to be a playoff team quite yet. Maybe another year or two. Mm-hmm. I want to see Tim Stutzel and Brady Kachuk develop just a tiny bit more. Detroit, I think, is playoff ready. Yeah. They have a really good team with Andrew Kopp and David Perron, but as a couple of additions, but yep. um, yeah, Bruins are going to be fourth or fifth place in the Atlantic um, that, and it sucks because um, if you look at their roster on paper a couple of years ago, they would have been a dominant team. And now they're just kind of whatever it is. It is what it is, you know? Yeah. And then who knows what comes after this year? I mean, you've got assuming Bergeron Lee is retiring, assuming krejci has gone Pasternak, we don't know what's going to happen with him. I mean, this team could be in for some major changes after this season. So they've really got to kind of make the most of it this year as best as they can. Yeah, they got to make they got to play as hard as they can, because if they want a Stanley Cup, they're going to have to make some improvements to their roster or just play really dominant hockey. And I feel like with this current team, I don't see it. I, I don't. I want, but I one player I do want to see have a more elevated role for a guy we didn't see until the last game of the season. I want to see Chris Wagner back on the main team. I mm-hmm. want to see him on the fourth line with Nosik and whoever the center is or whoever the left wing is. It's going to be Felino probably. Nosik, Felino, and Wagner. Yeah, I want maybe to see Frederick, him. maybe Felino. Maybe I don't know. And if they do trade Craig Smith, which I don't think they will, but if they do, I do actually want to give Fabian Lasella a try. Mm-hmm. I want to see. I want to see how he is. I've heard really good things about him. He just played an amazing tournament for Sweden in the World Juniors. Yep. And he played really good for the Vancouver Giants in the WHL. Yep. So I want to see him in the in at least in the AHL and the NHL. I want to see him um up a couple times, a couple games next season and give him a try just to see just to see what would happen. Yeah, see- he'll he'll definitely be my most focused on player, I think, in the yeah. preseason. Because I will, I want to see if he's ready. Because he was great in the WHL last right. year. It mm-hmm. looks like he's really acclimated well to the North American game. Has really uh, made that adjustment and gotten stronger physically. Very fast player, good with the puck on his stick. So he's a guy that you know might. If if he could, you know, maybe sneaky make the roster and have a real impact in the top six as a winger, then That's that crazy. may not may may make things quite a bit better for the Bruins offensively. Yeah, I agree. I mean, 
he might be fourth line to start, but if he really, really starts producing like crazy numbers on the fourth line, he could be second or third line center, right wing, and no problem. I mean, yeah. you can move around Pasternak back to the top line because I assume he'll be on that second line with Krejci and Hall again. Yeah. So you can definitely shuffle that around. Um, that's, I mean, you got to go with who's hot. It's yeah. what, look what they did with, with um, Jake DeBrusque. Got hot in February. Yeah. Put him on the top line and actually meshed well with Marshawn and Bergeron. Yeah. After struggling the past two seasons, actually producing and being a top player on this team, which is what he was supposed to be in the first place. And now that he's finally there, decides he doesn't want to leave, wants to stay. I hope he has a breakout season, at least like 30 goals. Like I yeah. hope he really has a really solid season next year. Yeah, definitely. They're going to need production of him, especially early in the season when Marshawn's yeah. out. They're going to need some other wingers to step up. Taylor Hall and Jake DeBrusque are going to have a lot of eyes on them to be big time producers until Marshawn can return for sure. Yeah, I agree. I also I, I do want to see Pasternak have a good start. He got a yeah. slow start, got hot around the new year, but I want to see him consistently good yeah. all season long, you know? Especially in a contract year. Back. What? Especially in a contract year. Yes, especially in the contract year. Is he worth the $10 million that he wants? Yeah. Is he? I want him to have more of the same from last year when it comes to his numbers, but consistently good all year. I'd love to see him score 50. Oh, like, he got this... robbed. He got absolutely robbed because of the pandemic. He yep. got this should be the 48. year that he scores 50, I believe. Oh, man. If he gets 50 pay him whatever the hell he wants yeah pretty much pretty yeah. much so all right so i think we have pretty similar views on this bruins team um i see them kind of as a as a playoff bubble wild card spot it, you know they could miss potentially depending on how the rest of that division goes but i i see them at best probably a wild card team in the east mm, yeah i agree all right. So we're we're on the same page there. Sam, thank you so much for doing this, coming on, talking Boston really? Bruins hockey. It's going to be an interesting year. And uh, thank, thank you again so much. And uh, if anything you want to promote, talk about, the floor is yours. Have at it, man. I know you're doing a lot with your channel right now. Yeah, uh, I just started up a podcast, just put it up a couple of days ago, the second episode. It's called Sam's Beantown Beat. You can listen to it on YouTube, of course, on my channel. And also you can find it on Spotify as well. Um, I'm going to be starting up soon a shorts channel, a YouTube shorts channel where I put like little clips of it. Um, of course, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at samsmith.yt, of course, and subscribe to my channel. All right, man. Th thank you so much. It was awesome to have you on. Everybody, Sam's channel will be linked in the description as always. So please check him out, show some support, drop him a sub. And uh, it was great to have him on to talk Bruins hockey. Thank you to everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this offseason discussion about the Boston Bruins. We'll, we've got a few more of these coming up as this offseason rolls along. So those will be on their way soon. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. And until next time, thanks again. We'll see you later.